Hi, this is Professor Charlie Evans. It's a hot summer day and it's time for me to record some very brief remarks on the world in 1500 as we come to a close of your World Civ 1 History 111 course. The remarks would also be good for History 112 as an intro to History 112. I found a really great map when I was browsing around on the web to try and visualize the state of the world in 1500. Point one, it is a world now. And so what do I mean by that? Before 1500, we really spoke of developments in South Asia, in East Asia, in Mesoamerica, in the Mediterranean or the Near East or Western Europe or in Africa, really in isolation. The development of the societies in those areas really took place as a result of internal developments. By 1500, the world was in contact with itself. In other words, all these different areas of the world were in some form of communication with one another. And while Europe became the driving force of that communication after 1500, that wasn't necessarily the case or predetermined case in 1500. It's a world now, and so what happens in Manchu, China, what happens in the Safavid Empire, the Mughal Empire, or Western Europe, all does slowly become more and more interconnected after 1500. And it's also obvious, really easily seen from this map here, that it's a world of empires. Um, with the extent of, with the exception of Africa, for the most part, much of the world was divided up between large political scale empires, whether that be the Manchu Empire dynasty ruling China, or, or the Ottoman Empire, or the Russian Empire, or the French Empire. The world, it was a world of empires by 1500. And that was really because of the technology, um, the technology in terms of uh, military and communications and economics that had, ex had emerged in the 200 years before 1500 that allowed the creation of large-scale political states. Um, that wasn't something that re really necessarily existed before that, although there were, have been empires ever since uh, really 3000 BCE. So it's a world now, it's a world of empires. Uh, it was not necessarily predetermined that all those empires uh, were going to continue to exist. Even though it's a world empire, uh, those empires are still largely uh, geo-defined. The Manchu Empire is defined to East Asia uh, is only with some of the Western European countries that we begin to have the creation of, of, of an empire that is not necessarily defined by an immediate geography. Um, one other point I'd like to make about the world in 1500 is that the ensuing development of the world uh, from 1500 and to a lesser extent the development of the world in the centuries before 1500 is an uneven development and so uh, while one society may reach, for example, gunpowder technology before another, eventually, because of the communication, everybody will have gunpowder gun powder technology. Uh, but the different uh, societies do emerge and evolve on a different uh, speed of development after 1500. My two last things that I need, I'd like to say here is that uh, from 1500 onwards, um, and this is a process that had been going on really before 1500, you have the erosion of what I call the feudal model or the feudal monarchy. And while the feudal monarchy uh, was good for stabilizing a kingdom or a, a, a society, on a rather small scale for in an immediate time of crisis uh, as the as 
large-scale empires emerged, that feudal model became less and less applicable. And so slowly, the ideology, the, the structure, the institutions of feudalism as they existed throughout different world societies began to decay after about 1500. The last thing about the, the dividing point of 1500 is that really, uh, you, 1500 isn't an absolute point in time. You could say 1400, you could say a little letter under, but nonetheless, it's really a great dividing point for the increasing importance of technology. And so, sure, there have been technological developments um, in the 1100s, in the 1200s, in the 15th century and everything, but increasingly the rapid scale of technology develop, developments from 1500 are really going to be what help to determine the continued existence or the eventual decay of these world empires. Uh, we could argue with that. We could argue with a lot of these remarks about the, the world in 1500. But looking at the world in 1500, um, and as I'm looking at the map, the other interesting thing that, the last interesting thing I'm seeing is that there is a Russia. Um, there is a France. There is a China. Um, there is the, the beginning of the existence of the political structures that would be be the important political structures of the modern world. And so that takes us to the end of History 111, History of World Civ. Um, it's, it's a complicated course. It's a complicated period of history just because there is so much happening. Not only is there so much happening, there are so many gaps in our knowledge of what happened and why it happened. And so it makes study of the broad scale history of the world before 1500 pretty difficult. Okay, thanks.